In our previous presentations, we learned how to find the time complexity of single loops, wherein the update expression, the variable, is sometimes incremented, decremented, multiplied, or divided by a constant. And we also learned how to find the time complexity of single loops, wherein the update expression, the variable, is raised to the power some constant. Now in this lecture, we will understand how to find the time complexity of single loops where in the conditional statement, we have a function other than the linear function. It can be an exponential function, it can be a logarithmic function or it can be a polynomial function. So, the title of this lecture is Time Complexity of Single Loops, Conditional Statement with a Function. So, let's get started and let's see the topics of this lecture. The first topic of this lecture is single loop conditional statement with a function. After understanding this topic, we will then proceed with the homework problem of this lecture. Let's start with the first topic single loop conditional statement with a function. Let's say this is the for loop. And our job is to determine the time complexity of this for loop. In this for loop, the initialization statement is i equal to 1. The conditional statement is i less than or equal to 2 power n. And the update expression or the update statement is i plus plus. Within this for loop, we have the printf function which is capable of printing Neso Academy when we execute this loop. What is the time complexity of this loop? In order to determine the time complexity of a loop, we need to find the frequency count of the innermost instruction of that loop. The innermost instruction of this for loop is printf Neso Academy. We need to determine what is the frequency count of this instruction or we need to determine how many times this instruction will execute. The number of times this instruction will execute will tell us the time complexity of this loop. So, let's try to find how many times this instruction will execute. And in order to do this, we need to analyze each iteration of this loop. And during the analysis, we will observe different values of i and we'll try to find the pattern in different values of i. Let's do this now. In the iteration number 1, we can observe the value of i is 1. So, this is the value of i in the iteration number 1. After this, i is compared with 2 power n. 1, let's say, is less than 2 power n. Therefore, this condition is true and hence, printf function will execute. After this, i is incremented by 1. This means the new value of i is 2. And this is the value of i in the second iteration. We are right now in the second iteration. The new value of i is 2. After this, 2 is compared with 2 power n. Let's say 2 is less than 2 power n. Therefore, the printf function will execute once again. And i is incremented by 1. This time, the value of i is 3. This is the value of i in the iteration number 3. And in the same way, we will get 4 in the iteration number 4. We are getting these values of i, 1, 2, 3, 4. We know it will continue up to, let's say, k, where k is some value. And let's say k is equal to 2 power n. This means this value of i is the last value for which this condition is true. I'm assuming k is equal to 2 power n. This is the value of k. But we need to find how many times this instruction will execute. The number of times this instruction will execute can be obtained from this pattern only. If we can observe in this pattern, that in iteration number 1, the value of i is 1. In the iteration number 2, the value of i is 2. In the iteration number 3, the value of i is 3. In the iteration number 4, the value of i is 4. So, it is clear that in the iteration number k, the value of i is k. So, this means 
there are a total of k iterations and hence this statement will run k times. So now we know this statement will run k times, hence the frequency count of this instruction is k. But the time complexity should be represented in terms of the input size which is n. So we now need to represent k in terms of n. We know k is equal to 2 power n. Therefore, we can replace k by 2 power n. This means this statement will execute 2 power n times. This is the frequency count of this instruction or this statement. Hence, the time complexity of this loop is theta of 2 power n. As mentioned earlier, the frequency count of the innermost instruction tells the time complexity of the loop. The time complexity of this loop is theta of 2 power n because the frequency count of this instruction or the statement is 2 power n. I hope this is clear. Let's take one more example to concrete this concept. Let's say this time we have this loop where the initialization statement is i equal to 2 in place of 1 now we have 2. The conditional statement is i less than or equal to 2 power n, which is same as the first for loop. And then we have i equal to i square. This is the update statement. This time we have i equal to i square in place of i plus plus. We do have the conditional statement with a function, but this time we can observe we have a different constant in the initialization statement and we have i power 2 in the update statement. What do you think what is the time complexity of this loop? Let's find out the time complexity of this loop by calculating the frequency count of this instruction. We will follow the same process which we followed in case of the first for loop. Let's analyze the values of i in each iteration. The first value of i is 2 as i is initialized to 2. In the second iteration, i is updated by i square. This means we now need to take 2 square. So this is the new value of i in the second iteration. In the third iteration, we again need to take i square. i is 2 power 2. We need to take the square of 2 power 2. This means we need to multiply this 2 by this 2. 2 times 2 is 4, so we will get 2 power 4, which can be written as 2 power 2 power 2. 2 power 2 is 4, and this is equivalent to 2 power 4. In the fourth iteration, again we need to take i square. i is 2 power 2 power 2, which is equal to 2 power 4. We now need to multiply 4 by 2. 4 times 2 is 8 and 8 can be written as 2 power 3. So, in the fourth iteration, the value of i is 2 power 2 power 3. We can observe a pattern here. The first value of i is 2 power 2 power 0. The second value of i is 2 power 2 power 1. The third value of i is 2 power 2 power 2. Then we have 2 power 2 power 3. This will go on up to, let's say, 2 power 2 power k, where 2 power 2 power k is equal to 2 power n. So, this is the last value of i for which this condition is true. We are assuming here that 2 power 2 power k is equal to 2 power n. Now, how many times this statement will execute? If we want to find how many times this statement will execute, we need to observe this pattern. In the iteration number 1, we have 2 power 2 power 0. So, in the iteration number 1, we have 0 in the power of 2. In the iteration number 2, we have 1 in the power of 2. In the third iteration, we have 2 in the power of 2. In the fourth iteration, we have 3 in the power of 2. It is clear that these values are dependent on the iteration number. We have 3 here in the iteration number 4. We have 2 here in the iteration number 3. We have 1 here in the iteration number 2. Here we have k. 
so the iteration number for this value must be k plus 1. It is clear that there are total k plus 1 iterations and hence this statement will execute k plus 1 times. But as we know, we need to represent time complexity in terms of the input size, which is n. So now we need to find the value of k in terms of n. This will give us the time complexity. As we have assumed that 2 power 2 power k is equal to 2 power n, this equation will help us in finding the value of k. How do we find the value of k? We need to bring this k to the base. And for this purpose, we can take log on both sides. Logarithm can help us bring the power to the base. That's what we want to do. So now we are going to take log on both sides. We will take precisely log base 2 on both sides. Because here we have the constant 2. And if we take log 2 base 2, we will get 1 eventually. And 2 power k will come in front of the logarithm. That's what we want. So let's take log base 2 on both sides. After taking log base 2 on both sides, we will get log 2 power 2 power k base 2 in the LHS and log 2 power n base 2 in the RHS. This 2 power k will come in front of log 2 base 2. This is from the property of logarithm. We know log a power b base c is same as b times log a base c. We are applying the same property here. a is 2, b is 2 power k and c is 2. So we will get 2 power k multiplied to log 2 base 2 in the LHS. And what about the RHS? In the RHS, we have log 2 power n base 2. Again, we can apply the same property of logarithm. Log a power b base c is same as b times log a base c. So, we will get n times log 2 base 2 in the RHS. We can rewrite this equation as 2 power k equal to n. We know log 2 base 2 is 1. So, eventually in the RHS, we will get n times 1. That's why we are getting n here. In the LHS, we will get 2 power k times log 2 base 2. And log 2 base 2 is 1. So, eventually we will get 2 power k in the LHS. So, this is the equation obtained from this equation. Now, we want to bring k to the base. And for this, we can apply logarithm on both sides. We need to apply log base 2 on both sides because here we have the constant 2. Let's take log base 2 on both sides. We will get log 2 power k base 2 equal to log n base 2. What is log 2 power k base 2? We will get k times log 2 base 2 by applying the same property log a power b base c is same as b times log a base c. And we know log 2 base 2 is 1. So eventually we will get k here in the LHS. And in the RHS we have log n base 2. So we can say k is equal to log n base 2. So this is the value of k, log n base 2. We know this statement will execute k plus 1 times. We can replace k by log n base 2. So this statement will execute log n base 2 plus 1 times. And the time complexity is therefore theta of log n. Because this time complexity is obtained after removing the constant 1 and the base 2. We know we do not have to write the base and the constant in the asymptotic notation. So this is equal to theta of log n. This is the time complexity of this loop. I hope it is clear. Let's take the final example where in the conditional statement, this time we have i square less than or equal to n. Here we have the linear function, but we are this time taking i square in place of i. The initialization statement is i equal to 1 and the update statement is i plus plus. We can rewrite this inequality as i less than or equal to square root of n. Because i square less than or equal to n 
is same as i less than or equal to square root of n we took square root on both sides we will get i in the lhs and square root of n in the rhs so now we need to determine the time complexity of this loop we will do this by following the same process which we followed in these two cases let's analyze values of i in each iteration in the first iteration the value of i is 1 in the second iteration i is incremented by 1 so we will get 2 here so this is the value of i in the second iteration in the third iteration the value of i is 3 in the fourth iteration the value of i is 4 this will continue up to let's say k so this is the last value of i for which this condition is true hence i am assuming that k is equal to square root of n and one thing is also clear that the total number of iterations in this loop is k because we can observe in the iteration number 1 we have value 1 in the iteration number 2 we have value 2 in the iteration number 3 we have value 3 so it is clear that in the iteration number k we have value k and as this is the last value of i for which this condition is true therefore there are a total of k iterations of this loop and hence this statement will execute k times and what is the value of k we assumed k is equal to square root of n so we are representing k in terms of n therefore we can say the frequency count of this instruction is square root of n or we can say this statement will execute square root of n times hence the time complexity of this loop is theta of square root of n so in this way we can calculate the time complexity of these type of loops where in the conditional statement we have a function we can have any function in the conditional statement and now we know how to find the time complexity of these type of loops so we are done with this topic single loop conditional statement with a function now let's proceed and see the homework problem of this lecture this is the homework problem determine the time complexity of the following loops your job is to determine the time complexity of these loops i want you to solve this problem on your own and i want you to post your answers in the comment section as well so we are done with this lecture okay friends this is it for now i will see you in the next lecture